Hi, I'm Ed Sperling. I'm the Editor-in-Chief of Semiconductor Engineering. I'm of our synopsis with Kayvon Kasragi. We're going to talk today about the benefits of very short reach in high-speed Ethernet. Kayvon, what is VSR in high-speed Ethernet, and why do we need it? Hi, Ed. VSR is actually a very short reach service that has been designed to address the specific lost channels inside the data center. In, in contrast to VSR, we have long reach service as well as the XSR service, which is a very extra short reach uh, services. Each one of these ones are designed for different loss profiles where it is needed to optimize basically the power latency and area that is needed for the specific SOCs, the specific interconnection, and so on. Let's take a closer look. Sure. Kayvon, what are we looking at? So we are looking at architecture of a data center in a current stage. Here we are looking at inside the server boxes. Basically, there is pizza boxes, there are 19 inch pizza boxes where PCs and accelerator, AI accelerator, are sitting inside that one and connecting to each other through a NIC, which is connected through a DAG or optics. Currently, there is a lot of, a lot of discussion between if you have to use DAGs or optics for connecting the service to each other, or basically the rack units to each other. PCs and accelerator are connected through the PCI connection as well. All this connection of the racks and the units of the racks are connected to the top of the rack, and from the top of the rack, they're connected to leaf switches, and from the leaf switches are connected to the spine switches. Connection from the top of the rack to leaf switches happening on the optic pluggable optical module. In addition, the connection from the leaf switch to spine switches as well are being connected through the pluggable optical module. The loss profile of each one of these connections are different. Basically, each one of these connections have different loss profile. The, the complexity of loss are different. And they, they address them optimally, you need different type of services, Ethernet connection between them. VSR is one of that connections that can be used in a specific location for a specific loss in a data center, hyperscale data centers. And this is all about speed and, and latency, right? This is really what's driving a lot of this? Speed definitely is one of them. There is a lot of demand in, in the data center. Point to point, basically, data transfer is being increased above 70%, 70 percent of whole traffic happening inside the data center which is 5x more than what is happening in the Ethernet, basically web domain. And this is supposed to be increasing yearly above over 30%. So it, speed is one of the questions, but speed comes with power. And power is scarce in the data center. And power dissipation is a very big challenge right now in the data center. So anywhere, any location, you can actually optimize power, latency, and area of, of your chip is going to be very advantageous inside the data centers. Within a rack, you, you're basically utilizing whatever's available, any resources that are available, right? So that's why it's so imperative for this data to move very quickly. True. The problem is like you want to connect everything as fast as possible with the lowest latency to create basically highest performance approach. And it's very important. Currently, there is 112 gig services that are being deployed, 100 gig services that are being deployed in the data centers. However, before it was like 25 gig. So the more the speed is going up, the challenges are being higher. So we are expecting to see different kind of approaches to every challenges we have in the data centers. Where do you typically run into bottlenecks here? So majority of the bottleneck in the data center is, comes from power consumption because power dissipation is very limited in that domain. So you cannot easily dissipate power because of the size of it and so on. In addition, the optical modules, they are very small cages. There is a lot of components like services, DSPs, as well as like the TIA modulator, PDs and lasers are sitting inside the small boxes of the optical pluggable optics. And basically, this, there is no to zero airflow and no heat sink inside that one. So you have to be basically optimize the power consumption inside the optical module as much as possible to have the best performance. So that computation of the dynamic power is what's producing all this heat, right? And typically, this has been done with air cooling where you're blowing uh, chillers in there. In the future, it, it may be, what, liquid cooled? could be liquid cool. That's one of the trends that we see in the market. However, in the current stage and cost efficient wise, people are using the airflow. In optical module domain, there is not much of airflow as well. So power consumption is the main challenge. So high speed series has various types of reaches. What's the optimum one here? Is there an optimum or is it depending upon what you're trying to do? So as I was mentioning, in the data centers, there's different, different basically channel losses and different requirement. There is different power requirement. There is different channel, channel equalization requirement. So there is no real optimal solution to correct all of this equalization and with a specific optimal scenario. So we have defined in standards different type of services. XSR is one of them. 
Longridge is one of them, VSR is another one, to address different channels, different power needs, different area needs inside data center, inside SOC design, and so on. So what is VSR really geared towards? What's the optimum for that? VSR, very short reach, is basically designed for channels, which is up to 15 to 25 dB loss. And, and basically, it's addressing the high power hungry LR with the lower power consumption and also with the lower latency. So if you look at here, this is basically a simplistic version of the DAC ADC based services where TX Digital talking to the digital to analog converter. There is a TX analog front end. After that, we have the channel. This channel can be different. That's what we were talking about. That this channel can be optical channel. This kind of channel can be PCB channel or DAC cable. Going through the analog front end and then going through the ADC, analog to digital converter, and then RX DSP. So to have equalization done for different channels, you can actually do it in the analog domain or you can do it on the DSP domain. Each one of them have their own merits. Like for example, if you're doing analog domain, the latency is very low, as well as the power consumption could be lower. However, when you go to digital, all of this once happens over clock. And the higher amount of clock that you need, the, the higher the latency. VSR uses a balanced version of this equalization scheme, specific correction schemes, to optimize the power consumption area as well as the latency by reducing the amount of the equalization happening inside the DSP and also increasing the amount of equalization happens on the analog side. What's the advantage of VSR versus LR? I think you addressed some of this, but is there a significant difference in terms of speed, in terms of power? VSR and LR, both of them are working at 100 gigabit per second, 112 gigabit per second. However, as you can see, VSR, based on what we were having discussion about, is using way less power. So VSR power is almost about 40 to 50 percent less than LR, 2.5 to 3 picojoules per bit is for VSR, while LR services are, used, are having about 5 plus picojoules per bit. In addition, because we are optimizing the digital signal processing in this service, as well as basically the ADC and DAC resolution and so on, compared to LR, we have a smaller area in addition to late, low latency. So comparison-wise to LR, we have better power consumption, we have smaller area sizing, which is, which is good for the integration, which is good for the power density issues that you can see in a large domain, as well as the lower latency. And what you're doing here is really getting granular with how the data is moving through the data center, right? So in the past, uh, you think about chips, the chips are being increasingly heterogeneous, they're being customized for whatever the application is, that you've got some faster modules, some, some slower modules. Here, what is happening is almost the same thing, but it's happening on the communications, right? True. Uh, we, uh, what we are doing in here is basically optimizing for every channel. And since in the data center you have different type of channels, different type of needs, there is no one solution as we were talking to address all of this one. So what we are trying to do in here is just trying to find the best optimal solution for a specific segmentation of this channel. So we are defining different segments of the channel's power consumption requirement and so on, and we are addressing them in an optimal manner where having only one solution is not going to lead us to the best optimal solution. What's the impact of this on total power consumption? As I was showing, there is almost 30 to 40, 50 percent reduction of the power only in service domain. When you're going, for example, to optical modules section, you're going to see that there is about 25 percent improvement in the power consumption of the optical module by itself. Optical module is not the only place that VSR services are being used. There are other places that VSR services can be used. For example, AI accelerator in here, as you can see, they are connected to PCs through PCIe domain right now. However, there is currently there is a lot of work being done to have clusters of AI connecting to each other through the, each one of these racks. Basically, AI accelerator connecting to another AI accelerator SOC in another rack. This which this happens in the Ethernet domain and VSR channels. The channels looks like around VSR channels around 15 to 20 dB. So VSR can be used in here reducing the power, reducing the latency. And this has to be very important, the low latency processing happening in here. So VSR is important and could be used in this kind of scenario. In addition, these SSDs are connected to PCs through PCIe at this moment. NVMe fabric that are currently being worked on could actually utilize VSR with low latency, low power consumption to make that fabric for easy access to the SSD, basically memories for PCs, basically processing units. And so putting this all in perspective, what does this actually mean for the data center? 
currently we have solutions to basically segment what channels we are using and try to reduce the power latency and also the area when we're designing a SOC to use the beachfront area, which is very scarce area in the optimal manner. Basically, what we are trying to do in here, reduce the power consumption because data centers are, have a scarce power. Basically, the power consumption issue is there and the availability of power and also high anticipation are the, are the challenges. So VSR is helping us to reduce the power consumption everywhere that is possible. Like, for example, as I was mentioning, when we have a cluster of AIs that are talking together through the rack, the rack unit, and in addition to the, in the optical domain, in the optical plug module domain, we are reducing the power by much. So basically, this optical component, like the lasers and TIAs and so on, are very, very sensitive to the power variation, the basic temperature variation, and that can cause drift or the laser renoise being higher and so on where you have to basically control power to temperature really very optimally and lower power means an easier control of temperature less power dissipations and the temperature is going to be more stable in general sense what we are doing is trying to improve the power consumption in addition we are in reduce, re reducing the latency by segmenting the market segmenting the basically services based on the loss and optimizing the service based on the loss that they have to equalize Kevan Kasragi thanks for a great explanation thank you